The purpose of this video is to get you guys some updates on what's going on with Fannie Mae's Flex Modification Program. If you are a subscriber to the page, welcome back, good to see you. If not, make sure you subscribe, like the videos below, and of course, always feel free to leave me a comment or a question. I do love hearing from you guys and I try to reply as quickly as I can. So as a reminder, a flex modification is a term that you're gonna be hearing thrown around a lot right now. If you are one of the homeowners who accepted a COVID forbearance plan and your investor on your loan is Fannie Mae, a flex modification is going to be one of the options a bank is going to offer you to help you transition off of your mortgage. So again, flex modification is the name for one of Fannie Mae's programs to help you go from being on a COVID forbearance to being back paying your mortgage. The loan modification's intention is to lower the payment a little bit. So just as a quick reminder, I know I posted a ton of videos about this, but if you're a Fannie Mae homeowner and you're on a COVID forbearance and you wanna figure everything out, you kind of have two options, right? You can accept what's called a deferral or a deferment where the bank would take the amount that you missed on your forbearance, put it on the end of the loan, and then have you resume the same payments you were making before COVID. That's one option. This flex modification is another option where the bank would see if they can adjust your interest rate and adjust the term of your loan to see if they can get that monthly payment dropped a little bit. So there's a ton of information on my page posted about kind of how to apply for this program and kind of what to do to get into the program. As of August 31st, the Fannie Mae Flex Modification Program is streamlined for borrowers who were on a COVID forbearance. So what this means is if you were a borrower who fell behind simply because of COVID, you should be able to get through this flex modification process with no documents. So if you fell behind March 2020 or later and you took a COVID forbearance, when it's time for you to apply to for this modification, if the bank is telling you to send in a document package, that should be a red flag. A red flag should go off in, in your mind and you should be able to reply back to them and say, I believe I qualify for the Streamline program. So I have now worked on four of these Fannie Mae Flex modifications and they are going through in a streamlined manner. So the purpose of what I'm trying to say right now is to just walk you through what we're seeing when the flex modifications get approved. So if you get through this process, meaning if you verbally tell the bank you need a flex modification, they will ask you a few questions. The questions are in another video on this page, but just as a brief recap, if you have Fannie Mae, they will ask you, was your original hardship impacted by COVID or some variation of that question? You will say yes. Then they will ask you if you are fully able to pay everything you owe all at once, right? That's what the banks would like you to do. You should say, no, I cannot do that. If you cannot do that, you want this loan modification. Then they will ask you, are you making enough money right now to afford just resuming your regular payment that you were paying pre-COVID? If you can, and that's a good option for you, they're trying to slot you into the payment deferral. So that would be a good time when you can say, yes, I can, and then they'd move you down that track. If you wanna be reviewed for this flex modification program to see if you can get a payment lowered, that's the point in the conversation conversation where you say no, and then you want to tell them I can pay a mortgage payment, but it needs to be a little bit lower than what it was before COVID. And then that will signify in the bank system that they can kind of open this flex modification review. Um, so once approved for a flex modification, the bank will give you the agreement in writing. I have included a link in the description box of this video to what a sample uh, Fannie Mae or fa yeah a sample Fannie Mae flex modification looks like. The servicer on this document is Loan Care, uh, but I just want you to be able to see what you can expect kind of to be coming to you when you get approved for this flex modification. So the things you can expect to receive when approved would be to be placed on a three month trial payment plan. Now I have tons of other videos on this pages about TPPs, trial payment plans, what they are how to get through them, how to be successful. So if you have questions specifically about the TPP process, watch those videos. But when you get approved for a flex mod, you can expect the bank to approve you and put you on this three month trial plan, meaning you will resume a mortgage payment for three consecutive months. So right now it's in the middle of November. So if I got approved for a flex mod today, I probably would have a December 1st, January 1st, and February 1st mortgage payment. That would be identical to the mortgage payment they want me to make at the end of the three month trial payment plan. So I make those three payments. At the end of the three month payment period, if I make it through and I make all the payments and there are no problems, then the bank would formally give you a final loan modification, which would kind of rewrite you a new loan 
you'd have a new principal balance that includes the payments you missed during your forbearance period, and you'd have this kind of probably a lower interest rate and a little bit lower of a payment. So that finalization of the process comes after the three months. So for Fannie Mae Flex modifications, you can expect to be placed on a three month trial period. Um, for more information, again, watch those videos. Um, you can also expect the document to have payment instructions for those TPP payments. So the lender will tell you this is exactly how we want you to make those TPP payments. Follow those instructions to the T. Don't deviate, don't call it in, don't try to pay it online unless it says it in that TPP document. Most lenders want TPP payments mailed or they want some sort of money gram or wire transfer. So I always advise my clients, don't pay anything on an online portal until you have an official final agreement in place. If you are pre-final agreement, you wanna make sure that you're following the payment instructions in that TPP. So look at the example below. Um, again, once you make it through the, those three months of a TPP period, they will then give you another round of documents. Those documents need to be signed and notarized, and then you will be done. As soon as I have an example of the final documents, I will try to do another video on those and post them here for you guys to see. Good luck.